normal everyday life out in the world. People tend to think of sensual desire and ill will. The active restless mind is their friends. This gives them their entertainment as they have to go through the drudgery of day after day. When we come here, we will learn that they're not really our friends. These things are hindrances, sensual desire, ill will, sloth and torpor, restlessness and anxiety, uncertainty. These are things that we've got to watch out for. But the first step in, in dealing with them, in fact the most important step, is recognizing that they are events there in the mind and that you don't want to side with them. You know, there are many times when you say, well, this, keep, this thought keeps coming back again and again and again even though I don't want it. Well, the fact that you don't want it is something you want to build on. But simply not wanting it is not going to make it go away. The next step is to ask, well, why is it there and why does the mind latch on to it? What entertainment value does it get out of these things? Or what sense of satisfaction? Or in the case of worry, what sense of doing a duty? You really have to worry about this, have to worry about that. You have to see through these things that they have their drawbacks, but they also have their allure. And it's, the allure is that we've treated them as friends for so long that I haven't really looked carefully at them. And they've been my friends so consistently that we actually think that they're us. This is my mind. This is what I think when I'm bored. When there's boredom in the mind, I'm bored. When the sleepiness well, or the symptoms of sleepiness, I'm sleepy. We tend to misread these things. So the first thing to do is, one, realize you don't want them, and then two, realize you don't have to identify with them. They're there. But treat them as just separate events that have come up in the mind, and as with any other distraction, like the sound of the birds out there, you don't have to get involved. Now, a lot of the involvement, of course, has to do with the fact that they're not just in the mind, but they begin to get in the body as well. They have put a squeeze on your breath, and through the breath they put a squeeze on your hormones. And so you have to breathe a lot through those effects. Reclaim the breath. They've taken the breath, we take it back. When they don't have the breath, okay, they lose an awful lot of their power. And that's where the leftover effects, this is that sometimes the hormones go racing through your bloodstream, the hormones that anger releases or that lust releases. You just got to sit them out. There'll be that effect in the body for a while, but it's going to end. Don't take it as a sign well, that the emotion is still really there or that you still really feel this. It's just the after effects that you have to watch, watch out for and then just wait till they go. In the meantime, you keep focused on what you can find is the most skillful thing to do with your mind right now. And use the breath as your friend, as your ally in this fight with the, with the hindrances. That way you derive them a lot of their power and they don't have the authority and the influence that they used to have in your mind. And you begin to see that the mind without those things is a lot freer and a lot more open. And you're better off without them.